Our next caller is Zach from New Jersey. Hey, what's up, Zach? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, wow, this is amazing. I can't believe I'm talking to you. Uh, <laughs> but um, I'm calling today because I unfortunately suffered an injury about a month ago. And I'm going to walk you through exactly what happened uh, on the day of my injury. But before that, I feel like I should explain um, what I do for a living. I am a professional musician, and the instrument that I play is the bassoon. Mm, cool. Um, and the bassoon, I brought it here with me. Uh, it's a woodwind instrument, and it's in the low family of the woodwinds, mostly orchestral. Um, and playing it involves taking a big breath of air, holding it in, bracing my core, and then moving wind through a small opening. Um, and the opening creates resistance um, through a reed. Now, so that's what I do constantly. Um, on the day of my injury though, I'll, I'll rewind it a bit. Um, I was at the gym and I was deadlifting heavy. Now I probably was deadlifting a little too much, but I, I had lifted heavier prior to this and everything felt fine. I was lifting 305, um, and I weigh 170 pounds. So I don't know if that makes a difference. Um, and everything felt fine. I felt no pain, no discomfort. My form was good. Um, but I, I did that and I might've deadlifted. I went down in weight after that. Then I did some barbell rows again, lighter weight, really focusing on form. Um, and after that I did some kettlebell swings to end the workout and I felt fine. Didn't feel any discomfort. Then I went home and I started practicing my bassoon. And after about an hour of practicing, I felt pain down in my abdominals, like in my lower ab, um, and a little bit near possibly my inner thigh. And so my first thought was that, oh no, I, I have a hernia. Um, and I freaked out. So for about a week, I was depressed. <laughs> I was like, no, I have a hernia. So I, I went to the doctor. The doctor checked me. He said, you don't have a hernia, which is a relief. But I strained my abs, um, which was kind of surprising to me. I didn't even know that I would be able to do something like that. Um, and now I'm, I'm basically asking you, do you have experience with abdominal strains um, and is it, I have not lifted weights for about four weeks. I haven't touched a weight, which is sad, but I'm trying to heal. Um, but also could I be bracing incorrectly? Yeah. What do you think? It's yeah. A, this is actually more common than you think. Yeah, it's it? actually, okay. So first off, two, two Hold questions. Hold on. I want to find out what you call yourself. If you play bassoon, are you a bassooner or bassoonist? <laughs> <laughs> I accept Bassinet. both. I accept Loader both. For short. Uh, yeah, cool instrument, by the <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah, it is. It's just, yeah, random. I very, like very it. cool instrument. Okay, so um, Thank you. here's a question. Two questions. One, who said it was an ab injury? Was it your Was it your, your primary care physician? Yes. Okay. It, it's probably, uh, I mean, uh, he may be right. He or she may be right. It's probably a deeper core muscle yeah. because you pulled it while bracing and blowing into so a lot of people might not know, but when you're, you're, you're playing an instrument like the bassoon, you have to tr create a tremendous amount of pressure mm -hmm. in your diaphragm and the, the pelvic floor muscles Which and all the all deep part core of muscles, core. they all have to stabilize to push this air through. It's highly unlikely that you pulled your abs. It's much more likely that you pulled a deeper core muscle. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that makes a difference in terms of, you know, kind of how we'll, we'll, we'll handle this. Here's the second question. Did you, by any chance, do you wear a weight belt when you lift, deadlift, and row, and, and do exercises in the gym? I do not. Okay, good. Okay, so weight belt would be terrible for someone like you because it teaches the muscle recruitment pattern of you pushing out against the belt, mm -hmm. which is the opposite of what you do when you play the bassoon where you, you brace your core. It's probably a deep core muscle, 
And, you know, I hate to tell you this, but the best possible thing you can do right now, and it's a good thing it's not a, a, a hernia. Just rest it, recover. Is to, yeah, is just to rest it. And I would do light bracing exercises, light twisting and stretching exercises just to keep movement going on. But oftentimes when those deep core muscles get strained, they can take a little while uh, to heal, but it's not super uncommon. I mean, it's not uncommon, uh, actually, and I, it actually sounds like you just really fucking overdid it that day. I mean, that was a lot of stuff that- yeah, involves you, those muscles. Yeah, that involves those muscles, and you just overdid it. You strained it, and the best thing that we can do right now is to let it completely recover and heal, and then when you get back into training- um, I would actually incorporate some like very specific core training exercises, like drawing maneuvers and stomach vacuums mm -hmm. and exercises. Quadruped. Yeah, specific to that. Yep. And then knowing that this is your profession and, and you require so much of this, this core strength is kind of being aware of that. Hey, if this is a day where I'm going to be practicing for an hour on the bassoon, it's probably not a good day to also be doing my kettlebell swings, my 350-pound deadlift, and re really getting after it. If any, And especially when this is your profession – um, and I know you have obviously fitness goals too, but if I was your coach, I would say, you know, Hey Zach, you know, today we got, you know, a show for an hour. You're going to be playing the bassoon. Let's not do 300 pounds of deadlifting today and your kettlebell swings. Let's do stuff to prepare you for your show tonight yeah. and make sure that you you're strong and healthy. So I think you just overdid it. Also, uh, I, I can tell you didn't follow any of our programs because rarely will we put deadlifts, rows and kettlebell swings in the same workout. That's a lot of lumbar, you know, stabilization required in one workout. I, if I'm going to deadlift, I almost, depending on the client, but for most people, I don't also do lots of swings in that same workout. So pick mm -hmm. one or the other. Rows can sometimes be okay after deadlifts, but even then I often do a supported row. So and it, we'll explain what you, like, so what he's saying, I think you more layman's turn, like you are two, you have a, a heavy loaded hip hinge movement. So you're going to fatigue that. And then you go to an explosive. I mean, you, you're asking for a potential injury yeah. right there. I mean, that's like, that would be like doing really heavy squats and then following it up with like yeah. some ice skaters or explosive jump boxes. Like, well, anytime you do anything uh, explosive under fatigue, if you've already pre fatigued, that's right. uh, you know, that muscle group, it exposes, yeah, a potential for straining or, uh, you know, some type of further injury to occur. Yeah. Here's a couple movements that I think might be okay for you to, to try, okay? You can try pelvic tilts on the floor uh, just to just start to engage the, the pelvis and start to get some move. And that's a very easy exercise. You lay flat on your back, your knees bent. You'll have a natural curve in the low back. And then just tilt your pelvis so that your back, your low back flattens against the floor and then let it arch and then flatten and then let it arch, okay? Another exercise would be quadruped uh, where you're on your hands and knees. You extend your left arm out and your right leg back. We have YouTube videos on all these, by the way, so we'll make sure we link these in the show. So quadruped would be another good exercise. And then lastly, and again, test all these out before you go and, and work them, okay? So the ones I'm recommending, they still might not be appropriate for you if they don't feel right. But the other exercise I would try with you would be a counter rotation exercise. So you can get a resistance band, mm -hmm. anchor it to something, Hold the stand yeah. up tall, hold the band close pale, to your body, pale of press, yeah, and then just bring it out in front of you so it's a little bit more. You're not twisting or anything, you're just resisting a little bit of the rotation. I think Justin rotation. and I did a yeah, video on, a that YouTube on YouTube on that. video. Yes. I mean, we're, we're, let's put them on a program. I mean, I think uh, when you're feeling better and healthy, mass performance sounds like with the direction yeah. of the mm -hmm. movements you guys are training him in, and I think he'd get great benefit from totally mass Z performance. Zach, are you great. have you followed any of our programs before? You know, I, I have maps aesthetic. Um, but I purchased it before I really knew about the right order of things. Um, so I haven't followed it completely yet. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, mass performance would be actually, uh, Adam, that was a great uh, recommendation. So once you're able to get back into training, mm -hmm. I would go more maps performance and, uh, you know, be very careful with exercise order. I mean, if you follow our program, you'll be okay for the most part, but Always be very careful. I, I know sometimes people, they, they don't understand the nuances of exercise programming. Like, like I said, I almost never would have someone do a kettlebell swing 
and a deadlift in the same workout. There are exceptions to that, but almost never would I do that well, with the average he, person. And then he went on to go play the bassoon all night long, too. So, I mean, you literally, I mean, I mean, you, I don't know too many people that would have done all that and not actually strain and hurt themselves. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you train the bassoon and you probably train core more than the average person, you probably handled it better than most people would have. It sure. could have been really bad for somebody who... Dude, can we just get like a little taste? Can we get... Oh, like, absolutely. I, just yeah, want, yeah. I want something. I want to hear, hear you play. Don't get hurt, yeah, though. Huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope the audio is okay with this. But uh, can you play uh, something like Metallica or something like yeah, that? No. <laughs> Metallica. Adam, Adam, Adam has a bong that looks just like that. By the way, I do. He does. <laughs> <laughs> Except Adam's bong is bigger. To be honest, yeah, we, we've all hit it. <laughs> all right. well, let's see. This is what it sounds like. All right, let's hear it. <laughs> That's, that's great, you know that what that's, you know like it, that, that sound, is that so is that the instrument that's played a lot when you hear that kind of ominous music in like movies and scary movies and stuff like that is that what do you think they use is it why it's scary oh, definitely yeah, yeah right it sounds I mean, like it's Jaws. Uh, Jaws. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's awesome, that's, that's Zach. That's soon. Thanks, man. Hey, we're gonna All we're right. gonna we're gonna send you over Maps Performance, okay? Thank you so much, guys. No problem. Man. Awesome. Right. Thank you, Zach. Keep rocking, man. Yeah, I, I will say this. Justin probably knows that certain instruments, especially some of the classical instruments, they like, they actually require a tremendous amount of like yes. muscle control and a lot of breath work. It's, oh, it's pretty demanding. Well, isn't that isn't that pretty in all like uh, what read? would read yeah. uh like instruments right I, who, I mean i mean i tried to play the saxophone when i was a kid and i remember oh, yeah. how much like you know you, strength you have to have in your cheeks and yes. be able to hold your core like Dude, yeah ethan plays a trumpet and yeah it requires just a whole lot of pressure oh yeah i played the trumpet and i remember that but you know what it's almost all instruments even the mm -hmm. guitar like if you've ever pr I, I literally practiced the guitar for like a week yeah. and i remember my fingers were oh, ruined you gotta it. build calluses yeah, yeah it's, so, it's totally its own skill yeah, yeah i mean the, great the, i mean i think it was you saw who pointed it out i mean uh I it, that actually didn't that trigger didn't even go off for me when he said the exercise order. Yeah. But holy shit. Yeah. You heavy ass deadlifts. Rows and then kettlebell swings. Yeah. Talk about fatiguing the shit out of the core. Yeah. And then going and doing an explosive swing. Like I mean, and, and then he could have been okay, but then he pressed it even further with the bassooning all night yeah. long. Yeah. yeah. This this is just highlights the, that the importance of exercise order. Oh, exercise order and programming. It. I know some people are like, "What's the difference?" And it's all the same exercises in your work. No. no, it makes a huge difference. This is the difference between an effective workout and one that is not effective. Oftentimes, they have the same exercises in them, and you look at them and you go, "Well, this one has squats. This one has squats. They must be the same." No, they're not. The the programming makes a huge difference. You know, this is this is a, actually kind of cool that we we got a quote. You know, such a unique question like this because we always get questions about. Could you guys explain how you write your programs? Oh and this God. is why it's so difficult to explain because this does. It's not like we go. Oh, oh there might be a bassoon guy who's going to be playing. So we, <laughs> it's just that there's some very there's yeah. general rules. Like I'm you always would, thinking like that. You wouldn't want to put those <laughs> things back to back in an extra. It doesn't mean you couldn't. It doesn't mean that it's wrong necessarily, but you know this is where the experience thing comes in. As you think about stuff, where man, I don't know if I want to fatigue this muscle and then do this and then go fall with that. So we take into consideration all that stuff when we put the exercises in the programming. Totally. So there's little nuanced things like that that are hard to explain when you're talking in general. But when you get a very specific question like that, uh, such a great point. It's exactly how you know right away. Like you didn't follow one of our programs because that wouldn't happen. I would never write one like that. Yeah.